I'd like to share with you as we begin today our identity statement, and we'll keep sharing that every week and also put it in the bulletin um, from this time forward. Last week, we unveiled the identity statement for the people of Vista following um, or as part of the worship service um, in the fellowship hall. And for those of you that were not here, our new identity statement is celebrating all people honestly living, proclaiming God's grace. Can you say that after me? Celebrating all people. Celebrating all people. Honestly, living, honestly living, proclaiming God's grace. And as I lived with that this past week, I'm amazed at how it just is part of all of the disciples and the ministry of Jesus and us moving forward in faith. If you are a guest here today, a special welcome to you um, on social media. It is our prayer always that this service is a blessing to all who participate, that we are fed and nourished and challenged by the word of God, that that word becomes part of who we are and that we wait for God's direction in our lives. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we are gathered in the name of God, our Creator, our Savior, and our Spirit. Amen. And for those of you at home, God's blessings. Today in our summer series, Moving Forward in Faith, we look to Ananias. He was a man of faith in the early church who was tasked with healing a man he considered an enemy, Saul of Tarsus. Yet he responded and went beyond his fear and judgment and grew the kingdom. May we open our hearts to all your people, even those we feel threatened by or judge. God is with us as we experience, share, and participate in the fruits of faith. We are led in our daily lives to listen and respond to the call of God. We gather together today in the light of Christ to offer our praise, our hopes, and our thanks. To be connected to you, O Lord, and one another. We are here to offer thanks. We are people who are loved, claimed, and called to be part of community. We find strength, confidence, and grow as we share our faith life with others. Gracious God, unite and uplift us as we walk together. We are here to confess our need for God. Gracious God, you call us to grow in spirit and love, to serve your world. Help us to be aware of your world's condition and offer hope. Help us to see our own brokenness and as your people, attend to our neighbor. Now we take a moment to reflect on where God is calling us as we move forward in faith. an amazing God who knows the joys and struggles of our lives. God's story and touch is lived through our lives of faith and proclamation. Praise be to God. Amen. Please stand for the gathering song as you are able.
we are a community that prays together. Let us pray. God, you lead us and direct us to use our gifts to your glory. Be near us as we walk together in faith and service. You have given us so much. We turn to the early leaders and participants as your church to see how their lives unfolded in faith and hope. They touch the lives of others with their unique gifts, just as we are called to do. We praise your name. Amen. heard no doubt of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous in the traditions of my ancestors. Saul, still bearing, breathing the threats of murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
The reading for today is from Acts, the ninth chapter. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying. And he has seen a vision that a man called Ananias will come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered him, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind up all who invoke your name. The Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, and he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored, and he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked his name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. Follow in faith. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And we sing kids' time song. So this morning, we only have one of our little ones who is barely toddling here um, as one of our children. And three of our staff are on vacation. Pastor Dan and his family are on vacation. Christiana is on vacation. And even our newest member, Sadie, is on vacation. Um, Some of them honoring their fathers who live outside of this area. So... Are you bringing her forward or just letting me see her? Hi, Hera. So if you let her go, she'd probably take off, right? Is she toddling now? She can walk now. So you can't answer any questions. So I'm going to ask everybody, as children of God, how many of you would consider yourselves young at heart? Okay. To answer this question, these questions. When I say the word fudge, what comes to mind? Candy? Chocolate? When I say the word bread, what comes to mind? Sandwich? When I say the word candy... What comes to mind? Chocolate? (laughs) Okay. All right. When I say the word Christian living, what comes to mind? I 
everybody's going, hmm, is there a right answer? When I say the word Christian living, what comes to mind? Us? Service? Love? Hope? Anybody think of God? Christian living? Can we be a lot? Hi, sweetie. Can we be alive in Christ and not communicate with God? Christian living. Today we celebrate Father's Day. And we celebrate all of the men, whether they were fathers or not, who shared their strength, who shared their grace, who shared their forgiveness, who shared their love on this day. And we thank God for those people because we were in relationship with them. And if we didn't have a good father, we might have had another person who was a mentor or somebody that was important to us. But those relationships were always filled with communication. We talked to them. They talked to us. We were there for them. They were there for us. And it was always part of the story. And sometimes we think that only we communicate with God. How many of you, when you pray, think God has to listen to you? Or should listen to you? Or is listening to you? Okay. How many of you listen to God? That's the other part. So that's what our gospel lesson is about today, communication and listening to God. So that's what Hera is going to grow up to do because her dad's going to make sure she does that. And I'm going to show everybody this little angel. Huh? No, it's all right. Oh, look at all those people. Look at all those people. All those people are people that care about you, but dad does the best. <laughs> and you've got her here on Father's Day. And you're going to teach her, aren't you, how to be a child of God. You're going to celebrate her. And she'll teach you how to be a child of God. So let us pray. Dear God, Dear God. I'll let you go down so you don't fall. <laughs> we thank you for all children, including us. Help us to celebrate our brothers and sisters. And recognize that they are all people. Amen. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So man, how many of you have heard of the disciple that we're talking about today? On an... I, People say it different ways. It just kind of comes out of my mouth as Ananias. We hear about Saul. We've read about the conversion of Saul. But we don't really pay attention to who the people are around Saul as he's converted. And I think that that's very, very important. Because the work of God comes not only through God, but through us. It's how we as God's people move forward in faith. How we are part of the story. The story of God is still unfolding and everybody here is part of that story. It's not just in print. In a bulletin. Or in a Bible. It's our lives. And it's God in our lives. And we are the people that move the church forward, all of us, together, with God, never alone. So I'm going to ask you to do something that we don't usually do in the Lutheran church, to grab a pencil in front of you and to um, write down or circle these words. The Lord said to him in a vision. Yeah. 
Here I am, Lord. Get up and go. At this moment, he is praying. Verse 13, but. Verse 15, go. And verse 17, brother Saul. These are some of the important words in today's reading. Ananias heard from God. And in order for him to do that, he had to be open in communication. He had to be praying. He had to be a disciple of God. Have any of you ever had visions? A few? Have any of you ever heard the direction of God in your life? It can be as simple as, you really should call this person. You really should go out of your way for that person. So he had a vision. He was in communication with God. And when he had that vision and he heard that voice from God, he said, Here I am, Lord. It's similar to the Old Testament when Samuel said, Here I am. When Isaiah said, Here I am. When they were ready to answer the call of God. And then, in this vision, he was given a direction. Get up and go. And I'm going to tell you very specifically, get up and go, and I want you to go to this street and to this house and to find this man. God can be very specific sometimes when we're directed. And then the word, but. None of us have ever said that to God, right? But I don't want to. <laughs> but that's not what I planned. But I'm afraid. But I'm busy. And even Ananias, in a vision, with God speaking to him, said, but, and thought he could convince God not to, like he had the answers. And finally, he decided to follow that voice. And he went into that house and he went up to that man and he said, Brother Saul? Not, well, God sent me, I have to do this. But Brother Saul? And he treated Saul with God's grace. That's what today's lesson is all about. And we don't call it a gospel, but we can call it the good news, because this is our story. It's God in our daily lives telling us that we should be attending to those around us. Telling us that there are those that are in need. Telling us to have open hearts and to look and to listen. And hearing our butts and going, no, go. Just simply go. I gave you a message. You're to share my love. You're to further the kingdom. You're to make an impact in the world. Go. And we're doing 
moving forward in faith as the small disciples because nobody pays attention to them because we only want the grandiose stories. We only want the story of Saul whose eyesight was taken away from him, who literally was knocked flat on the ground and had the voice of God say, go to Damascus and I'll tell you what's going to happen then. Did you notice that God and God's voice didn't heal Saul? It was one of God's people. God sets an emotion, and we follow. And when we say, but, God is saying, didn't I tell you to do this? I prepared the people on the other end. Saul is praying. Saul has been told that you're coming. Saul is not the enemy. You'll go to the people that need to know that they are loved. And it's not a hose that shoots everybody with God's love. It's individually making other people feel like they're celebrated and they're worth something and they are part of God's creation. When I was ready to change <clears throat> a call, I was in my mid-30s, and I was a single pastor, and I was exhausted. I worked too many hours. I didn't have a life that was nurturing me. The church was taking up all of my life, and I was even contemplating leaving the church because I was so tired. And for some reason, I had this little voice in my head that said, why don't you take a sabbatical? Why don't you go to Holden? And I never wanted to go to Holden. I didn't know what Holden was. I looked it up, and I thought, well, that's interesting. It's a mountain in the middle of Washington that you can only get to by boat and a bus that goes up a big hill. And for some reason, I invited my mother and my mother lived on the other end of the country, and she was in her mid-50s. And we met at the bottom in Chelan, and we went through this beautiful river. And I'm thinking, this is going to be good. And then we went up this beautiful hill in this rickety old bus, and we got to the top, and there happened to be a women's conference going on, and we didn't know anything about it. And we went, and it was good. But we were there for a reason. And one of the young men was watching us. One of the staff members was watching us. And one day when we were in the lounge, because of course they didn't have a TV and you had to talk to other people, he came over and he sat down with us. Which surprised me, because everybody that was there stayed aloof from us. And he started talking about who he was and my mom said well where did you go to school that's a good grandmother thing to say and or motherly thing to say and he said I went to St. Olaf and she goes oh my boys went there and then she asked him other questions and they got close deeper and deeper into conversation and then she said to him after he explained who he was your parents must be very proud of who you are And he looked at her and he said, the reason I'm here is because my parents don't want to have anything to do with me. Now you have to remember, this was the early 90s. And the world wasn't as open as it is now. And she said, why would, why would they do that? And he goes, because I'm gay. And my mother sat there and she connected with this young man and he looked just like my brother's. And just out of her very, the depths of her soul, she said, well, then I'll love you. I think you're wonderful. I think you have something to offer the world. And I was in awe as I watched this woman having this conversation with a young man that they had never met, 
who both in some way were prepared by God to meet. And he was in tears and he said, you know, nobody has ever said that to me. And you look just like my mother. And then she began to cry. God had put them together. It wasn't her saving the world. It was her listening to another person and then embracing them and giving them God's grace. And it wouldn't have worked if I had done it because I was a pastor and I knew all the right things to say. He needed a mother. He needed someone that would look into his very eyes and say, well, then I'll love you. That's what this story is. It's Anaya saying, I don't want you, God, but Brother Saul, I'm here to heal you. I was sent by God. And Saul went on to do great things. My mother only kept contact with this young man for a few years, and then he sort of went off her radar, and they both went on with their lives, but I'm assuming he went on to do great things. That's what moving forward in faith is. It's those little encounters where we live honestly. Nobody had ever said to my mother, because I asked her, that they were part of the LGBTQIA plus community. Nobody had ever said that to her. And he watched as she got silently, and or went silent and thought about it, and he waited. And part of his heart was healed. And part of her heart was opened. And she never looked at that community the same way again. I was up there because I needed to say to God, here I am, Lord. What do you want to do with me? Where do you want me to go? I'm still open. And that took a seven-mile hike up to one of the lakes at the top of the mountain, and I finally said, I'm still part of it, God. You direct me. And then I came down from that mountain, and I went back to work, and two weeks later I was offered a job that nobody had had before in specialized ministry that would give me my life back and said, here you go, build it. You're now the regional And we're just forming this job, and somebody gave us your name. Here I am, Lord. It's as simple as that. Opening our hearts in the morning and saying that out loud. Here I am, Lord. Can you say that? And Here I am, Lord. Do you mean it? And it's not going and changing the world, unless that's what you've been called to do. Saul said, here I am, Lord, after his eyes were opened and as he prayed, and he became a great evangelist. But most people are like Ananias. Living in their cities, touching their neighbors, and offering hope. I love Ananias now because I see myself in that story. I boldly proclaim, here I am, Lord, and then God tells me what to do, and I go, but, eh, do I have to? And then we do. And God will have the other person ready. To God be the glory. Amen.
celebrating all people, honestly living and proclaiming God's grace. Our Lord gave us a great gift in Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of our Lord is ready, and all are welcome to God's table. You may be seated. If you are having communion with us at home, grab a wafer, grab a cracker or some bread, wine, juice, and I will commune with you after the congregation. For those of you at home, please commune with me, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Those crackers are crunchier than I thought. People of God, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We continue with the prayers for God's world. Alive in Christ and filled with his spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Restoring God, your spirit is at work in the world as we work toward restoration of our planet. We pray for the planet, its water, its lands, birds, animals that are threatened. We are called to be stewards, and yet we ignore the needs of your creation. Move in us, O oh God. Fill us with love for your world. Ever-present God, your love embraces all. Send your spirit of love and healing to places that are troubled. We pray for community, communities suffering injustice and trauma. Our world knows violence, war, and pain. We are often overwhelmed. Help us to move in our lives and to be a part of the solution. Move in us, O oh God. Fill us with love for your world. Today, as we continue with prayers for the people, we pray for Jim Robertson, who is hospitalized and who is very, very sick. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. We are all called to be instruments of healing, hope, and love. May we walk alongside those who know anxiety, stress, hopelessness, who are in life transitions, or who search for your presence and touch of hope. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially Jim and the Cray family and those we now name in our hearts. Move in us, O oh God. God, whose spirit unfolds in our lives, 
You change our understanding and move in our lives as we grow in faith and witness. You claim us again and again as we wander off the path or believe that we have already have the answers and don't need the Spirit's direction. May we all be open to spiritual growth and renewal. Give us courage. Move in us, O oh God. Fill us with love for your world. God of life and relationship, we celebrate the men who, in our lives, who taught us and led us with grace on this Father's Day. We thank you for men of faith who have nurtured those around them and offered blessing. May love and tender care be present in all relationships. May we grow into people that you call us to be. Move in us, O oh God. Fill us with love for the world. Generous God, you give us a wonderful variety of gifts. May the ministries and people of Vista be blessed as we move forward in faith. May we follow where you lead us in our lives and in our faith community. To you always be the glory. Move in us, O oh God. Fill us with love for your world. Trusting in your presence and in all things, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The offering will be taken at this time. Crusader Choir of First Lutheran Church in Columbia Heights, and it stayed with me. It stayed with me even to when I was in tending the garden at Prince of Peace, the Polygona. I would be singing this in the courtyard. So it's a summer song, and it's also a song of great love. Christ when a child. Christ when a child a garden made and many roses flourished there he watered them three times a day to make a garden for his hair and when in time the roses bloomed, he called the children into share. They tore the flowers from every stem and left the garden stripped and bear how wilt thou weave thyself a crown now that the roses all are dead ye have forgotten that the thorns are left for me the Christ child said they plated then a crown of thorns and laid it rudely on his head and from his brow all pierced 
is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of life to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul? To lay aside his crown for my soul. We continue with Growing God's Ministry through Vista with our opportunities for service and love. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I am Christy Johnson. I am uh, honored to be a member of council. And I need to turn to the announcement portion of my bulletin. Um, things coming up this week. Main thing, Wednesday is Fair for All. And again, this is not just for people who are of lower income. This is for all people. And it's a, a great way to come in and was that last Wednesday? Ha! Huh. Bulletin's wrong. In a month from now, we'll be fair for all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great thing. <laughs> um, next Sunday at 11 is Faith Formation, and that will be a time to, to gather and to discuss our faith. The big thing, oh, and happy Father's Day to all fathers and father figures out there. But one thing I need to ask, um, we really do need readers and communion servers. Please sign up in the gathering space. There's a, or online, I think we still have online, yes. yes? Mm -hmm. So either signing up for that, it is a blessing, and it's, it's a blessing to do, as well as to have you do. I think that's it. So just as she was doing the announcements, I realized that I was in charge of the weekly update because Cindy was on vacation this past week, and I totally forgot about it. So I apologize, and I'll send that out um, today. Please stand for the sending song. special gift for Jim Robertson um, after speaking with him last week. So we're hoping that he heard it in spirit, um, that last ending, to rise up, O saints of God. Honestly living is part of our identity statement, and we go into the world honestly living that we are imperfect, and yet we are God's people that can make a difference in the world. As we leave this place, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord give you courage and an open heart and be with you to meet all of your needs in mind, body, spirit, relationships so that you can grow God's kingdom and God's light. In the name of God, our creator, savior, and spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Move forward in faith. Be filled with the Spirit. 
experience God in creation, and share the love of Christ. We will. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.